Okay, well, welcome everyone. Uh, we're kicking off December here and uh, have uh, more Isaiah and some exciting things that the Lord has uh, brought to mind. You know, I was reading through uh, chapters 30 up through 33 uh, this week, and uh, I felt the Lord placing different scriptures on my mind that I had not paired with Isaiah before. So um, <laughs> intrigued to bring some of that forth uh, tonight. So I'll go ahead and get us started here, and uh, we'll find, I'm sure, some good opportunities, as always, to pause along the way and uh, share some thoughts and have some discussion. But uh, sort of our, our theme tonight, along with Isaiah, is a quiet revelation. And uh, that's uh, a good thing to keep in mind as we go through some of these scriptures. And it's very interesting how, uh, well, I guess what that means uh, as we break that down and try to understand it. So I'll uh, start off. I know it's been a couple weeks. So I think maybe a, a quick recap of where we left off would be good. Uh, you, you remember we were talking about some of these verses in Isaiah 30, uh, where we left off, and um, <clears throat> it says uh, here, and I'm going to add a little bit to it this time as well, to take it a little further than we did before, but it says, wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh suddenly at an instant. And so that's the part, we read some of that, uh, at least the um, uh, that second verse, a couple weeks back, and we talked about rising and falling for that theme. But some great imagery here, as the Lord uh, describes sort of a, a, a tall or a high wall, and, and you know, uh, perhaps a part of that that is swelling and, and uh, corrupting, causing that the whole wall might suddenly come down. And we're going to come back to the reason why as we go through some of the other scriptures. But it's mentioned here, it says, because they despised the word. And instead of trusting in the word, they trusted in oppression. Now, that's quite an interesting phrase. You wouldn't normally say that of yourself. I trust in oppression. <laughs> um, but it, it sort of pairs with putting trust perhaps in the leadership or government of the day, which is kind of an interesting thing to think about. We see uh, in our nation in particular, a history of favor and uh, abundance and providence. And, you know, we, we have leaned upon the government to be a good government. And we have had many uh, wonderful leaders and, and, and blessings and prosperity. You know, perhaps some of that, uh, you know, is uh, part of the government, you know, and the many wonderful programs we've had over the many years that I've been alive. But, you know, we see how shaky it becomes and how uh, maybe it's not a lasting trust that can be had in that but he goes on to say uh here in the next verse and he shall break it as the breaking, hour, hour uh, um, as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces he shall not spare so that there shall not be found in the bursting of it a sherd to take fire from the hearth or to take water withal out of the pit. So now he's adding to the descriptive uh, you know, story here that not only will the, the judgment or fall be sudden, but it will be complete. So that's uh, 
uh, you know, giving us another insight that when the Lord um, causes that, uh, that fall of, you know, maybe much of what we see today in the world, our current uh, structure and, and society, and all the wickedness that, that is sort of embedded within that, it will be taken apart completely so that it's no longer functional, right? There's not, not really anything left uh, to spare uh, from its uh, remains. And it finally wraps up here and says, for thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, and I think this is so interesting. It says, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In quietness and in confidence shall be your strength. And you would not. So the Lord is saying here, I offered this to you, that if you would return, that you would have a quiet confidence, that you would have strength. And, uh, but, but, you know, he was refused by Israel. And my question is, you know, how does returning to the Lord and rest, you know, th those are interesting words. How do those pair together? And so I've kind of, uh, <clears throat> well, let me go back here. I've got some scriptures that kind of go along with this. And I was thinking about, well, why does it say return and rest? And yet, isn't that what happens? That when we return to the Lord, we find a great relief, a great rest. And, and what came to my mind as I was pondering that verse, uh, I believe the Lord put upon me, my thoughts, this scripture in Matthew, and I know that we know this scripture. It says in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. And so I think about this as a description of the, the state in which we can live. And uh, of course, a place, you know, that, that would be um, uh, in Zion, right? And what a place to dwell, a place where we have the strength of quietness and confidence. So let me pause there before I go ahead any further and just see if anyone has any thoughts or comments about that. But uh, anything jump out so far in these scriptures? Uh, Jeremy, tell me where you just read about take my yoke upon you. Yeah, Matthew eleven twenty eight. 28 okay. is uh, what I just read there. Mm -hmm. um, Brother Jeremy. Yeah. You know... I was reading online about the Jewish word for light, which is OHR, and they were given a description of it that I, I never realized before, and I think it relates to this. Um, their word, or, it means more than just light, lighting up. It, when God said, let there be light, there was chaos, you know, there was darkness, you know, in the world. And when he, he said, let there be light, there became order, you know, there became light. And, and then he created all his great creation. And in the article, it said, that's what God has called us to be, to be light in a chaotic world. Yeah. And I'm thinking, right now there is so much chaos and to have that quiet confidence is really something to i don't know if you work for it or or what but to think about because there's so much that disturbs my 
affects my life, you know, so much that I hear either on the news or that someone in the church is, is experiencing something bad. And I think to myself, I, I need to find the, um, I need to be a light, you know, I need to find order in chaos. Mm. Yeah, I think that's a wonderful comment. And, uh, you know, it's true that when I read that, I thought the words don't seem to go together. I think they're not intuitive, at least not to the person who doesn't walk in the Lord. And just like you were saying, um, you know, it, it's it's something to say that we can find light or peace or quiet or confidence or order in the midst of this world. And you might think, well, I come to the Lord and, and I take upon myself as a result a burden, a responsibility, a work. But here this verse is saying, come unto me return and rest and you know we can have a state of rest a state of quietness and confidence in the midst of the world that we're living in and i think you're right it's something that would come from great effort to stay focused and centered upon the lord so i don't pretend like this is um a simple or easy thing but yet how beautiful, uh, you know, these, these words, they bring us, uh, and why would you have quiet confidence? It's because you know, <laughs> you have reassured yourself in the messages of the Lord. And you know that he has all taken care of it. You know, sometimes I have these moments where I, I like you were saying, I think about all the problems, or sometimes, you know, and this is silly, I think about what could happen. It hasn't happened, but I worry about what could happen. As a parent, right, in particular, these thoughts cross my mind. And then the Lord comes in with the word as we seek it. And I find a confidence and a comfort that takes my mind off of those worries. And in the midst of all sorts of peril, you know, like you say, the word, the, the news, the, the potential of, of calamity, I can find that quiet confidence and not worry. But doesn't this, doesn't this today bring out the best of Isaiah? Because your point is, is an excellent point, that we just look at our time. We look at our day. We look at how things are getting worse. And the word oppression is for the first time not coming from Germany or Japan. It's coming from us, our own nation. We are being oppressed by our own people. And that's the first. We don't know how to react. Well, you've always taught us that Isaiah is, is unique in that he speaks to different times. The same words speak perfectly through different times. So therefore, to answer your point, that we at first do react, you know, not well or whatever. But if we remember, look, Isaiah's already been through this. Mm -hmm. He's already had oppressive times, much worse than we have today. Mm -hmm. And he said, and ye would not, meaning in that day, uh, they didn't do it. Uh, mm -hmm. They didn't return to God, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So it, it gives us that much more impetus to say, okay, I'm not going to be that way. It failed. They failed. I'm not going to fail. I'm going to return. I'm going to rest. I'm going to do it the better way, uh, as, as impossible as it seems. Yeah, very good. And, and so, you know, there's this um, sort of hidden truth, right? The light burden. You might think of that as another oxymoron, but the burden of Christ is light. It's not really a burden at all. It turns out for those who try it, who, who step out on faith, they find that it's not a burden, it's a relief. And so, um, you know, like you say, uh, Israel would not, but there was an opportunity for them uh, to 
find rest even in the midst of those circumstances. But ironically, they put their trust in the system, in the masses, in the, the rulers, even the very ones who were oppressing them. And, and I find, you know, it's a reminder to us today that um, it's not the government, it's not the systems, it's not, um, you know, uh, whatever it might be, right? It, the, the financial support uh, of, you know, programs or, or retirement, those aren't the things that we're, uh, that we're to put our trust in. Brother Jeremy, uh, as our brother was uh, talking, it uh, sort of struck me that uh, I've heard it said that there's nothing new under the sun. What's happening uh, today has happened before. And they've had chances to uh, make things right and the next generation probably would have the same thing happen. However, I would say that uh, in turning to the Lord, that's, that's what we do. We, we tell others of the Lord. We tell them about repentance and tell them about righteousness. And each and every generation are to, uh, to, to tell someone else about uh, this righteousness of Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is nothing new. He's from the foundation of the world. And he came to save all sinners. And that's what he is about today. And so we, we know the story, but it continues to complete itself. We want, want to make sure that we're in line with Jesus Christ and others would see us, but we are to be the head and not the tail. Amen. Yeah, we have wisdom to offer. Uh, the world that we have received. Uh, yeah, very true. Okay. Uh, great discussion already. I'm loving this. Um, <laughs> let me keep going here. Um, so we also, uh, a couple weeks back, uh, we, we, I sung the song, The Fall, and the, that song made a comparison of uh, judgment that is going to happen just like it was described in these verses, suddenly and completely. And it was comparing that with the fall of Goliath or the walls of Jericho falling and how those things happen suddenly and how the walls of sin in this day will also fall suddenly. So that's kind of a recap uh, again, but let's uh, move forward now into some new things. Um, now that we've kind of added some some extra layers onto what we covered before. As we go on, I, I, I went ahead to the 18th verse now in chapter 30, and it says there, and therefore will the Lord wait. And, uh, you know, it's uh, sometimes you hear it said, where is Zion? <laughs> we, we become impatient. And sometimes we might even say, where is justice? Where is deliverance? And the reason the Lord is waiting is because of mercy. He's waiting that there might be opportunity for repentance, the full uh, opportunity for everyone who would to return to the Lord as we just read. And so he says, therefore will the Lord wait that he may be gracious unto you, and therefore will he be exalted, that he may have mercy upon you. For the Lord God is of judgment, and blessed are they, all they, that wait for him. Now, that um, last portion that says, blessed are they, all they who wait for him, is, uh, I think, quite a, a message. And it, it goes along with sort of the theme of the church uh, that we would prepare ourselves lately and be rid of distraction. That, I think, is what it means to wait upon the Lord. Not that we would wait for the Lord to bring about judgment and then quickly repent and come to him, but that we would return now. 
And I'll, I'll build upon that a little more here as we get into some additional uh, scriptures here. But it says in the 20th, um, and I've captioned this, you know, what sustains us in this time? And it says in the scriptures, and though the Lord give you the bread of adversity and the water of affliction, yet shall not thy teachers be removed into a corner anymore but thine eyes shall see thy teachers and thine ears shall hear a word behind thee saying, this is the way, walk ye in it. When ye turn to the right hand and when ye turn to the left. Uh, this is very interesting. And, and some of the uh, thoughts uh, from some on the first line there is that there would be a time of little bread and little water. And, you know, in, in a time even now where we see some of the prosperity slipping and we see inflation and we see uh, supply chain issues and it's not so hard suddenly to imagine kind of like the Titanic, you know, we were a nation who could not fall, it would seem, but then a time of uh, scarcity uh, starts to uh, hint uh, of, of future problems, right? And so, but what's, what's being pointed out in this verse is that while that happens, while there is perhaps a shortage in those things, there is an increase in teaching. And so uh, what a reminder to us that when the things of the flesh fail, we're stirred up to turn back and focus upon the things of the spirit. And, and so that's sort of, uh, you know, I, I think the message here, and, and this is a promise to say that when these things happen, though the Lord might allow there to be um, adversity and affliction or scarcity, you might say, that in that time there will be comfort in teaching, in knowledge, in hearing a voice that is so present that it's steering you right and left from moment to moment. Okay. Um, so it's, you know, it reminds me of this verse, once again, in Matthew, that it says, but he answered and said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And so, you know, again, it's sort of another play on the theme. Uh, don't put your trust in the world, or those things maybe that you know, we're enjoyed for a time and a season, but we're temporal, we're carnal. In a similar way, he's saying, don't put your trust in just the natural things uh, like bread, but live, be sustained by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And, you know, when we fast and pray, that's what we're doing. Um, we're, we're sort of turning down the focus, uh, the volume of, you know, natural needs that we might turn up the focus on the spiritual things. And some, we have to do that sometimes. We don't even realize the level of, uh, you know, uh, how consuming it is, you know, just to get through the day and, and take care of the natural things and how much that can take us away from the Lord. And in the moments when we turn all of that away and just leave it to us and, and God, we find new teaching, we find new understanding, we find closeness with the Lord. And I have this, uh, you know, this, this I, I wanted to bring back again our thoughts to where we started tonight. We read that verse at the beginning that says, because Israel despised the word, right? Well, sometimes the Lord brings about adversity um, and, and takes our focus off the natural things, off of the, the, the blessings of the flesh that we might uh, turn back to the, the word. And so we want to be sure that we understand how to find that, um, that quiet confidence and that peace in this time. And it won't be through 
financial well-being. It won't be through, you know, the, the natural things. And haven't you married the Isaiah quote with the Matthew quote perfectly because uh, thine eyes shall see thy teachers, uh, Isaiah tells us. Hmm. And, and Matthew says, how, uh, every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God, well, who, who presents, who presents the, the word, the, the teachers? Mm -hmm. The teachers pre prevent, uh, present the word to it that, that proceeded out of the mouth of God and were written. But also, there is another way uh, in that the, the spirit can speak. It says, uh, you know, in, in effect, that, that voice you hear in, in your ear isn't necessarily just a human voice. It, it can be the spirit of God telling you, in effect, what has already proceeded out of the mouth of God. So you, you've married, you know, the, the New Testament, Matthew, with the, with the old and Isaiah. Yeah, you know, I think so, too, that when it speaks about this um, word behind you, uh, that made me also think of the spirit. Uh, so, yeah, I, I think that's, that's right. Um, and when we take those distractions away, we can focus upon the Lord easier, hear the spirit speaking to us more easily. Mm -hmm. And speaking of return, I think it's so important. Uh, Jeremy? Yeah. Um, I was looking at uh, verse 16 and 17, which you, you passed over there, but it says, but you said not but you said, no, this is after he's asking us to rest, find your safety, find your salvation, rely on my word, just rest in that. And, and you're saying, but no, we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall ye flee. And what uh, basically says, you're going to flee. But <laughs> the word is just as swift as you, and we can outrun. And it, then it goes on to say that, uh, 1,000 shall flee at the rebuke of one, and the rebuke of five shall ye flee, flee. And it says, and you will be like a pole or a flag on a hill of what not to do. <laughs> I, I told you, just rest in my word. You mm -hmm. can run what, what God has coming. Yeah. Just rest in his word and trust in his word and rely upon his blessing. Yeah. Get but, vaccinated. And we say no, I can outrun it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh mm -hmm. it's a good um reiteration there. And and like you mentioned, the Lord gives them what they wanted, right? They wanted to rely upon the wrong things, so he left them with those things. Uh yeah. Okay. Uh very good. So uh, this brings us to the song for tonight. And uh, along with the theme, it's A Quiet Revelation. 63. And we actually talked about, uh, you know, the, the reference verse with this song in our books is this, this verse in 2 Nephi that talked about line upon line and precept upon precept, which is um, a favorite fundamental verse uh, of mine. And we've read it already in Isaiah. He said those words also, and, and we've covered some of that. So interestingly, um, you know, there's a lot of uh, songs that mention Isaiah, even this one who mentions the, the Book of Mormon scripture of Isaiah. But, uh, and, you know, we, we've been bringing up, uh, some of us on the call have been looking at how many songs mention Isaiah. And we're up to almost 60. Wow. And so, um, and I think there's probably more yet. Uh, like this one doesn't necessarily have the Isaiah scripture reference, but you're talking about a quarter of the songs, right? And so it's, it's interesting. And this song mentions Isaiah too in the lyrics. And so I think uh, uh, I'll try to sing this for you tonight, but uh, it also goes along very much with our, our message tonight, uh, and it's very interesting how, how often, how significant his words are. 
So I'll, I'll uh, go ahead and play that now. And as we uh, sort of talk more about about it afterwards, I'm I'm still. <laughs> I guess one of our goals tonight is to try and understand why, why is the revelation quiet? <laughs> what does that mean? thoughts one you know it goes along with what sister terry was saying right about the light in the darkness and uh but again you know it, it's uh these quiet words bringing back all that jeremiah and isaiah had to say and i guess there'll be a uh, maybe a good discussion point for us why is it a quiet revelation any thoughts Yes. 
I was thinking, Brother Jeremy. Yeah. Because Jesus speaks with a small, still voice to those that will listen. Yeah. Yeah, he, he requires um, humility and faith and a receptive heart, right? I think he wants us to be close enough to hear him. Yeah. And he doesn't uh, force us, right? I was thinking, too, there's so much noise. I mean, even if you watch television, the commercials and all that stuff, isn't it nice to have someone speak to you in a quiet tone? Mm -hmm. I, I just think it's so special. Yeah. I, I'm reading I'm reading Jeremiah again, and and I have to tell you that he's I th I think he's why it's a quiet quiet revelation because he was told to stand in the gates, meaning where all the people pass by, and basically it doesn't say this but shout at them, you know, shout at them. Thus saith the Lord, you know, and, and all kinds of revelations that he gave them you know this is this is why the lord's punishing you this is what you have done and your your fathers before you and and he was anything but quiet he he was in their ear constantly uh, at the at the gate the different gates the lord told them go to all the different gates and and tell them tell the people well it's pretty noisy at the gates you know they're they're coming and going and they're talking and meeting and greeting each other and and he had to get above that so it was not quiet and and the point is it didn't work yeah it didn't work he had the best man available doing the best job of obedience and repeating the words of god it didn't work yeah interesting how how that's true yeah very good brother um jeremy I also yeah. think like Sister Terry was saying, you know, with so much noise around us going every which way, right. when somebody's speaking quietly, you're more going to turn your ear to hear more of what they're going to say than somebody that's screaming and yelling at you all around you. Um, you're going to want to know what they're going to say because that's, that's a sign of control that's a sign of calmness. That's a sign of surety, confidence, all of those things. And that, that's why I, I, why I think it would be a quiet revelation. Hmm. Yeah. You know, a parent from time to time when their kids are making noise, they tell them to be still. And God in his way said, be still and know that I am God. Mm -hmm. So we uh, go with that counsel that we uh, have that quiet revelation with them. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, it's so interesting to me how, once again, it's, uh, it's counterintuitive, right? The world thinks the way to get your attention, the way to display confidence is to be loud, <laughs> yeah. you know, to clamor for attention. And yet we find that the Lord doesn't need to, to clamor right the words that he speaks stand on their own because they're true and so uh there isn't a need for all the hype and and volume right it's it's really uh it's like when you hear someone who is wise you often think of a soft voice you know someone who uh, doesn't have a need to uh, raise their voice, someone who, you know, you would listen to without all that, right, because of what they're saying. And so there's a quietness in the revelation. On a Zoom. There's a quietness, I think, um, yeah. in, uh, in oh, Zion. Okay. Um, you know, let me uh, just get Did back to Screen here, so, one yeah, second. Right. Brother Jeremy. Brother. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. They're not only um, loud in their voices, but they're loud in their actions. You know, 
how they go about doing things. The, the crazier, the more attention they think they think they're going to get, you know, the more bizarre they can act or behave, the more they're going to get you to look at them. That, you know, that's another thing. I met, I met a kid like that one time and I said, look, you don't have to go to all these extremes. I mean, if you just want to be loved, then, then say so. You ain't got to go to all those extremes to get attention from somebody, you know. But people do that. And Brother Jeremy, there's also another aspect to when someone is speaking quietly to you. And that's that, that you lean in and you get closer. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it, these are interesting things to think about, aren't they? And I think, too, it's a, a sign of respect. Um, you know, and I, I mean, don't get me wrong. There are times when I'm, I'm preaching and I get excited and I probably have a hard time being quiet. <laughs> but generally, you know, and there are those moments of passion and excitement. But generally, when I'm speaking to someone, um, I think it's a sign of respect to speak quietly to them because if you're yelling at them it's sort of indicating you're trying to force them right and and when we speak quietly it's like you know hey i understand and respect that you have the right to make your own choice and you're going to think the way that you're going to think and it's not really up to me to uh, coerce you into thinking differently but again you think of a wise teacher speaking softly and respectfully um, but also with that quiet confidence, you know, that we read about it before. And so, and, and I think it's the Lord's preference. He'd rather we listen to his quiet voice than test him and uh, anger him to the point of yelling. And, you know, when the Lord yells, we don't want to be anywhere around that. Right? <laughs> Brother Jeremy. Yeah. All the covenants, they were given quietly and, and in private. Mm. If you look back, but when he warns us, that's when he asked like Jeremiah to shout. Mm -hmm. That we can't say, well, I didn't hear it. Mm -hmm. Now you're ignoring it. But when he gave it to us, they were just spoken. He didn't have to, there was no photo ops. There was, like you said, no flashing lights or parade. <laughs> this is my promise to you. Yeah. And, you know, and, uh, and they clung to those words. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. It's sort of like the last resort to yell, right? Uh, your last warning. <laughs> uh, I can testify in, in that in song, when I'm standing before a group in church in Mexico or wherever, if the spirit has, it doesn't happen every time or all the time, but I know when the spirit has told me, get up front, Brother Bob, and sing this song, and I'm enthused, and, and I, I, want to, I, I want to give it voice. Mm. But very, very often when that happens, it comes out really softly, really quietly. And some people complain to me later, Brother Baba, I was in the back of the church. I could hardly hear you. And, you know, they, they were crying when they were talking to me. And I say, well, apparently it, it reached you, you know, because, because I was crying when I was singing. And, and it's, it's very interesting that this issue of, a quiet revelation is, mm. is true in a, in a lot of things. Mm. Yeah, and what strikes me too about it is that uh, because it's quiet, we have to pay attention. Mm -hmm. We have yeah. to seek it. And you know, what we have um, is the word and these songs that are subtly bringing forth the message. And you know, it's not like uh, we're being hit over the head with it. You, you can make the choice never to open and read uh, these things, right? And so it's, it's a quiet thing because it's reserved for those who want it, those who earnestly seek it and make that effort, right? 
Brother Jeremy. Yeah. You almost said just what I was going to say to you is that, you know, I, I love that line as well, you know, precept upon precept, line upon line, little here, little oh. there, you know, that quiet revelation. I think it's meant for us too, because like you say, when you're seeking and wanting to understand the things of God, you're willing to listen. You're willing to be quiet and listen to what he's trying to tell you. So, you know. Very good. All right. It's kind well, of to study the word of God and draw close to God with uh, the vacuum cleaner going and all this stuff, is it now? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very true. And, and so, you know, maybe this is also instruction to find quiet times with the Lord. Yeah, so that, you know, I think we, we brought up some interesting thoughts and, and, and reasons. And, and what I had written down is, um, you know, again, we needed to seek it. And, and how beautiful it is that this great blessing, this strength of God is available if we are willing to listen to that quiet, still voice and incline our ear and open a softened heart to it. This um, week in one of the meetings I heard, uh, they opened with the song, Come and Dine. And, the, and, I, and I was thinking about this lesson and the, the, the line hit me. You may feast at Jesus' table all the time. That's what's available to us. You know, and, and so many times it's like the wedding feast. The Lord lays this beautiful feast out and the people who he intended it for don't show up. And so, you know, what's, what's there before us today that the Lord is uh, offering if we're really attentive to it? If we quiet down, as was said many times tonight, the noise around us and tune into the voice of the Lord. So, um, you know, sort of in contrast to this, I think it's a good question to ask, what are we seeking? Or what is the world seeking? And, and again, I kept hearing these voices from Matthew this week. It says um, in Matthew, a wicked and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given unto it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And after Christ spoke these words, he left them and departed, it says. So there, right? <laughs> he was done, right? I've told you the truth. You're not going to listen. I'm out of here. <laughs> uh, and, and so, you know, I, I wonder, um, isn't that sort of what the world is doing? They're waiting for a sign or some sort of uh, call to action that would be obvious and point them to, okay, now it's time to get my act together to repent. You know, I was having a conversation with someone uh, this week and I, it, 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 it was burdensome because they said, well, I, I, I believe in being good. And maybe when I'm older, I'll, I'll seek out a faith. And, you know, what if you don't make it to older, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and we opened tonight with these ideas. Blessed is he who waits upon the Lord. And the Lord waits upon us that we might get it right and repent out of a willing heart. More blessed are they who are not compelled, right? And so, uh, but it's the world that seeks after, let me wait until the, the crevices appear in the earth and the lightning falls and fire comes down and then I'll repent. Well, you know, that's not what it says are the blessed people. It's the blessed people who listen to the Lord willingly beforehand and wait upon him in faithfulness and righteousness. And so I thought, you know, we need to seek the Lord rather than signs sometimes, or, or rather than waiting for a sign to draw near him, because the Lord has given us enough uh, signs uh, to draw near. And, and that's what he's saying here. You know, I've already given you the subtle message of the scriptures. 
and listen to the message that is sort of, you know, represented in the story of Jonas and, and learn from it. Okay. So a um, couple of other things here and we'll begin to wrap up, but as we go on here in, in the 30th chapter, I'm going now to 23. It says, then shall he give the rain of thy seed, and thou shalt sow the ground withal, and bread of the increase of the earth, and it shall be fat and plenteous. So, you know, we read just a few verses back how there would be a time of scarcity or adversity, but now we're reading about a, a great change. The prosperity, um, I think, of Zion, and it mm -hmm. says... In that day shall thy cattle feed in large pastures, and there shall be upon every high mountain and upon every high hill rivers and streams of waters in that day of the great slaughter when the towers fall. And, you know, that's so interesting because though this great judgment would happen, and it's just like today, how it was in Babel. There was a tower in Babel. There are towers today. And the songs speak of those too. And those towers will fall. And, and when that happens and the Lord is, is done cleansing uh, the earth for his kingdom, there will then follow this great time of, of abundance again. And, you know, I was thinking, you know, living here in Colorado, mountains, really they're a source of water, which is a source of life. Hmm. There's so much sim symbolism in mountains. Um, you know, the rivers that, that feed the nations, our nation, they start with snow in the mountains, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so that's the source, right? Zion will be the source of great plenty. And he says, moreover, uh, and this is interesting, it says, the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun, and the light of the sun shall be sevenfold as the light of seven days in that day that the Lord bindeth up the breach of his people and healeth the stroke of their wound. So we started with sort of the recap of last uh, class with that breach and the wall falling. And now we're seeing how the Lord will bring back together and heal. And there will be, uh, it, there, there's this new description here that we don't hear about as much. It's not really new, but it's, it's uh, less spoken of. Uh, of how Zion will be a place, uh, again, you know, Sister Terry of light, of brightness, right? As, as you mentioned. Uh, um, right. So, you know, wonderful things, wonderful things to, to look forward to as the word talks here about Zion. Isn't this proof positive, this uh, 23 to 26, that when the day of great slaughter happens, the towers fall? which is what we all dread. We, we all hate the knowledge that this is going to happen. But he's saying that there will be people there already. Isn't he? In this quote, he says, then shall he give the rain and now it shall be fat and, and thy cattle will feed in large pet. I mean, it sounds to me like many will already be there. What do you think? Ooh. yeah it's, it's possible um it's certainly possible and i think um you know i think of a place of refuge and a place of 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 the kingdom uh, and i always struggle you know to be too sure when it comes to timing in particular with isaiah's words uh because i don't know if it's sort of like many other instances uh very compacted you know where he's sort of reading through in one sentence, what's going to happen in years, right? Uh, but yeah, hard to say um, exactly. If, if that's certainly a way to, to take this. Um, you know, he says, uh, in the day of the great slaughter, when the towers fall, you know, right? So it does seem like it could be a, that day, or it could be that era, uh, that, that, that approximate time frame, you know, it, but we know either way, it's, it's shortly on the heels, right? Mm. Um, and, and so it's, it's all in that same, same time frame at least. Interesting uh, 
question for sure. Um, so uh, again, we, we talked about this a little before and, and you know, it, it expands upon it here uh, about where we trust. Um, it says, woe unto them that go down to Egypt for help and stay on horses and trust in chariots because they are many and in horsemen because they are very strong, but they look not unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. So, you know, it's a caution to us today. You know, we, we have many things to turn to, many things that would uh, promise uh, support and, uh, uh, you know, deliverance even perhaps. Um, but do we trust in the Lord more than those things? And, you know, it says here, they trusted in Egypt because it was uh, the, the, this huge population of people, right? And yet, uh, they did not find strength in numbers, did they? Uh, and so that's also, I think, a lesson for us today. We are a, a minority. You know, this peculiar people is a very small people in comparison to uh, the, the noise of the world. Uh, but be not deceived, right? Why would you go back to Egypt when they're the ones that enslaved you in the first place? Yeah, yeah trust and oppression, right? <laughs> very strange so he says um in the third verse now and we're getting into 31 now uh the 31st chapter but in the third verse it says now the egyptians are men and not god and their horses flesh and not spirit when the lord shall stretch out his hand both he uh, that helpeth shall fall and he that is help helping shall fall down and they shall all fail together so again uh you know, you, you might think, well, I'll find strength in what everyone else is doing. I'll go with the crowd. The majority is safe. Well, it says here, not only will they fall, but those who turn to them will fall. Right. Yeah. And so I think we have to be reminded today that the whole purpose of this quiet voice is to warn beforehand, before the loud voice, before the loud voice comes and shakes the earth. And the point of that is that we might understand there is a great separation between good and evil that the Lord might purge and prepare for the day of Zion. And so in order for that to happen, um, you know, we have to be able and willing to stand apart from uh, the masses, the, the, the popular uh, way, the broad and, and uh, the broad way that leadeth to destruction, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> And I'll, I'll leave you with this. Now I'm kind of uh, getting into the 33rd chapter here. Uh, it's describing here in these uh, two or three verses, the people who would inhabit Zion. These are the traits that they're going to have. So this is 3315. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despiseth the gain of oppressions. Now, that's the opposite, right, of trusting and oppression. That shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, right? We're not looking for approval, acceptance, or, um, you know, alliances. We're looking for truth. Mm -hmm. It says that stoppeth his ears from hearing of blood and shutteth his eyes from seeing evil he shall dwell on high. His place of defense shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall be given him. His waters shall be sure. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is far, very far off. And, you know, these are the people, I think, that have that quiet confidence to trust in the Lord, to be still and know that he is God to have a peace and contentment because they know, uh, we know that we, we've put God first. Mm -hmm. All right, those are my slides. So I'll stop the share <laughs> there and see if anyone has any thoughts, comments before we wrap up tonight. Brother, yeah, 
I think before we run for the FEMA camps, we should remember the land of milk and honey. Mm. Remember the promises. Okay. Stop looking to get food that's dehydrated and powdered and everything else. <laughs> Rely on God's promises, his provision. Mm -hmm. mm. Amen. It's the message over and over again to fear not, right? Yeah. Because it says you're it's oppression. Once you go inside those fences at those camps. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and I, I think, you know, as you read end time prophecy, you do hear about um, you know, an option the world offers to escape the calamity. And we don't want to take that. <laughs> well, I appreciate everyone's uh, uh, thoughts and, and participation tonight. And uh, I hope uh, it was a blessing for you. And, and I hope that we have a great excitement for the things of God. Jeremy. Yeah. I, I really like the way you take just a small portion, just a few ages or verses or something because it's so much easier for me to digest it i really um i really always feel like i learned something from it when you do that also i forgot to mention that today uh, brother sal Azanero was taken to icu oh. and he has um high fever and very very low blood pressure so and that's all i know for now okay yeah. well thank you for mentioning that we'll keep him in prayer Oh, yeah. Well, praise God. We have so much to be thankful for. Um, and, uh, you know, I say this once in a while, um, but it's, you know, it's, it, we're preaching to the choir, I know. Uh, but we can take these messages and repeat them to others who need to hear them, who maybe aren't yet in the choir and uh, mm -hmm. I, I like to say if you're not having fun in church you're doing it wrong mm -hmm. right so we we need to be excited and if we're doing it right we'll see what the manifestations of God mm -hmm. right these signs shall follow them who believe and so as we draw closer to the Lord you know and I felt the Lord's spirit even at the beginning of our meeting, when Sister Betty shared her praise report, the God, you know, the Lord we serve is working in our lives and blessing us and doing wonderful things. And so we, it's good to get together uh, like we are tonight to rehearse the things of God, to stir up our excitement and to be reminded that we are to turn out into the world and be ambassadors for Christ. Uh, I think our brother Chet mentioned that um, that message to us tonight too, that we need to preach Christ. And as, as we are filled with his word, we're enabled to do that. Um, and we need to be richly filled, richly excited uh, because it takes that. Uh, and again, we don't have to yell, but uh, we can certainly have that quiet wisdom <laughs> and uh, live a life of a, someone who has the zeal of God. Uh, and so I pray that the Lord will help us to be lights in this world and bring people from our uh, love for them uh, into the truth. Uh, so may God bless you, and I hope that you have a wonderful weekend. I'm uh, grateful to see the Lord has brought you through another week, and we'll uh, certainly pray for our brother Sal and others who stand in need tonight. Um, does anyone have a, a desire to close in prayer tonight? Or a prompting. Okay. If if uh, if you would, uh, Brother Larry, uh, could I ask you to, to close our meeting? Okay. Let's hold on. Can I say something, please? Yeah. Um, could you please put on your prayer lists, Lori Hudak, her husband Joe their son and daughter, Emily and Christian. They live in Australia, but she's an American citizen and things are getting so bad over there. She's praying for a way to get home, to bring her family here. Please pray that God would make a way for them okay. to come home to America. Yeah, certainly.
And I thank you all for your prayers. Absolutely. Let's bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you with thankful hearts. And it's, it's so good to be with those of similar spirits, Lord. And we pray, Father, that you would hear our humble prayers. And Lord, help us that we would be in tune with you, that we would always be listening, O oh Lord, that we would seek those quiet places, Father, to, to hear your whispers. And we pray, Lord, that you would strengthen us and give us courage. Lord, we don't know what is ahead. We do know we have a, as I say, we see through a glass darkly, Lord. But you know what is before us. You know what we need. And I pray that we would trust in your provision. And that we would not fear, Lord. Be with our sister Kamala's friend, or Lord, or in Australia, that they would find a way, O oh Lord, to get back to where they want to be. And be with the many who are afflicted. We know there are still others that are being struck with with this COVID and we ask, oh Lord, that you would protect us and help us, Father. Be with the afflicted wherever they may be and be with those in the mission fields. Bless each footstep they take, Lord, that you would even hollow the ground before them and that your spirit would go before them and open up the doors. Whether on this land or across the seas, Lord, I pray that you would protect them and bless them. And I would ask this in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Amen.